that we've got the animal hanging and aging for a couple days, we're gonna take a knife to it and we're gonna take it apart as we would if we were at home in the backyard or in the field if it was an elk on the ground. Of course, we wanna start with a sharp knife and we're gonna take the flank off either side so that we can see the tenderloins in here. We just follow this natural seam, come right down to the rib and trip that off. And you want to be careful that you don't cut into the loin or into these tenderloins. So that's the flank steak right there. These are the tenderloins. Some people call them the fish. These are the most tender cut on the animal. We want to take these out as soon as possible. We don't want to age them any longer than that. Otherwise, we're going to get a poor yield. We've reamed out the anal tract and we did not cut the pelvic bone. So we're cutting way up here to get to this tenderloin. On this side, we're going to cut way up here along that pelvic bone and right along the chine bone here, which is the part of the spine. Then we just reach in and peel this off. So we've got a nice tenderloin here and we don't want to age it. I mean, it's not necessary to age because it's already the most tender cut on the animal. If you let this hang for four days, it's going to dry up and you're going to get a poor yield off it. I also like to get it out of the woods, out of the uh, carcass in the field because the birds and the magpies, camp robbers know exactly where that is. So the next to take this front leg off, which is not attached by any bone, it's just muscle. We just follow this and we have a really good, nice top of the neck shot right here. So we have no loss as far as the yield goes on this animal. And you can see right here where you want, don't want to cut into that premium loin right there because that's the prime rib or the rack of lamb or rack of venison. So we just take this front leg off front arm and again for warm weather hunting you want to get these off and get them cooled down so we take these off and if you're putting them on a horse or a panyard you got equal weight loads so we've got the front legs off we got the tenderloins off we got the flanks off so now we're going to turn this around and we're gonna take the back straps. Some people call these the fish, but these are the back straps. Most, again, tender cuts. This is basically the New York strip, the prime rib, and of course we go down to the neck. Where we start is right here at what we call the H bone. And we're gonna cut right into these feather bones. And draw the knife right down along these feather bones, all the way down to the neck. Again, if this was an elk on the ground, you'd do the same exact thing. Next cut, we wanna be really careful. There is these, what we call finger bones. So we wanna come behind the finger bones and come right down because you can see the loin right there. We don't want to cut like this. We'll put a big slit in there. This saddle goes straight in. We can take part of the neck right off with this. So now we have a nice, beautiful loin with part of the neck. This is the strip loin, the prime rib. This is, again, really, really tender. So we come behind the finger bones.
And again, another beautiful tender piece of meat. So the next thing what we can do is uh, if you wanted to for the rib meat, some people will cut in between the ribs. You can take your knife and you can actually peel this off and all in one piece, part of the neck. And you want to see if you can get some of that brisket because on an elk or a moose, a biscuit is really big. There's a lot of meat there. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work on these hanging rounds or the two rounds. I'm going to start up here and then I'm going to move it to the table because I don't want to separate it and then have one leg here and the leg and the whole carcass over here because this will pull down. That's going to jerk up. You're going to get cut or it's going to hook you in the nose. So we basically just cut right through that pelvic, right up to the pelvic bone. And then on the back side up here, there's what I call wings and nuts. There's some really big pieces that come out, this H bone and this piece right here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep this. So when we get to the table, we can just pretty much take it off. When you're cutting, you wanna be really careful that you don't cut yourself or your buddy because the pelvic bone has holes in it. So we just come around because we want to try to get that sirloin butt off with the leg. So we have what we call a hanging round. And then this wing on this H bone comes way out here. So we do the same thing on this side. We have to go out all the way out around this wing here and then down along the pelvic. Once you've done this once or twice, you can get a pretty good feel for it. And then when you come down to that H bone, you know, you're coming out. And on the inside, we're just gonna come right along here, right along that pelvic bone, and right along the inside here, and then down to that H bone again and out. Now you can do this on the bench. There's 101 ways to doing this, but I just wanted to prep it while it's hanging there. So if we would have left the head on there, we've never cut through the spinal column. We've never cut through the head for, you know, we're just literally pulling the meat off the carcass. So now we put it on the table and we're just gonna let gravity really do its job here. The ball joint is on the uh, on the femur, which is on the leg. So there's just a little, little tendon in there that we want to cut through. And then once we get through there, we don't, they're gonna put the knife through the table. We wanna go right underneath the pelvic bone. So now we've got a nice full hanging round. We've got the knuckle, the inside top round, the bottom round, the shank, sirloin tip or the knuckle, and the sirloin butt. Beautiful piece of meat. So now we just do the other side. I'm just going to flip the carcass over here. Use that other leg for some weight. Come underneath. And there's, there's our other hanging round with our sirloin butt intact. We got the hind leg here. This would be the back left leg of the, of the deer. We have a shank, very tough. This one is the eye of the round, the outside bottom round, the knuckle, or call it the football, the sirloin tip. We have the inside top round, heart shaped, uh, most tender cut on the hind leg and the sirloin butt. So basically we're just going to peel this off and you could do this in the woods. You could do this in the, you know, in the field or on the picnic table out back off the swing set. So basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this shank off of here. And when you do this, you want to keep this hawk intact so that you can hang that meat. So the, it's going to peel this off. This is what we would have for oso buco or veal or lamb shanks. And we're just going to come down and literally just peel this off. Take this shank pretty much off. 
follow all of this and all of this. So we're just going to basically come all the way around like this. Follow this joint way down here. All the way around. And then back up. Once we get that stripped, we're just going to go from the ball joint right to this joint, basically right through the seam. And we're just going to cut right down to the bone. We don't want to cut to the table because we don't want to cut into that muscle on the other side. These round bones are the bones that are really good for stock or as they call it today, bone broth. So we're just going to peel this off. If you leave a little bit of meat on there, that's fine. You can trim it off later. If there are some joints down here or wings or I call them nuts and bolts off of this end down here. So that's our femur. Again, the round bones are the best bones for broth. So now we have a, basically a boneless round and we can literally take this apart with our hands and open this up so we can see all the muscles. The sirloin tip, which is the, basically the thigh or the football, the butt back here, the bottom round, between the bottom and the top is the eye of the round, and this is the heel, which is basically part of, and the shank right there. So this is the top or inside round. So we're just gonna basically take this piece off. You always know that you're in there on the, in the, between the top and the bottom because of all this fat and connective tissue in here. And there's always a gland in that fat connective tissue in there. Which is so here's the eye of the round. This is the shank and the heel. That's where this was hanging from. Here's the other part of the shank. This piece right here is the tri-tip that comes off this sirloin tip. That's the sirloin butt. So if we put it back together, we have the sirloin butt here. We have this tip right here. We have the eye of the round. We have the shanks. We have the top round. And we have the bone like this. So that's how it would be basically put back, put back together. Well, here, right. More like this. So we'd have it back together that way. Most tender cut. Heart shaped top, flat, nice square, very uh, grainy with a lot of connective tissue on the bottom. The eye, which goes in between there. The thigh or the sirloin or the knuckle. This is our sirloin butt and the tri-tip and the shanks. Again, toughest but most flavor. And we don't have any meat to grind, so we have to go shoot another deal.